All right, Carl. You're yeah, all right, mate. All right, mate. Yeah, I'm all right. Are you all right? Yeah, good. Thanks, Carl. Can we do like um, we're just we're on air at the moment. I've put you on loudspeaker on my mobile, but the phone quality is not very good. Should all right. I, should, should, <laughs> <laughs> should I, can I ring you back and put you through the desk in a minute? Uh, well, I'm just a little chef about to have a Olympic-sized breakfast. I mean, the life you lead. Hey, chef. What are you doing a little chef for? Other little cafes are available. Yeah, uh, just because they're all right, aren't they? I'm just in, uh, where are we? Lime Regis. You're in Lime Regis <laughs> in a little chef. Bonkers. We've been camping. Have you? Oh. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like, I'm sure it is. Be careful in that wigwam, Carl. Is, is that it now, then? Have we finished? No, 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 I'll give you a ring a bit later. Can I answer the phone in about 20 minutes? Come on, Carl. Right, c- contribute. All right, see you, mate. Bye. We've got um, Carl Pilkington on the phone. All right, Carl. All right, how's it going? Quite good, thanks, mate. What are you doing? Why were you in a little chef? I um, uh, just went to Lyme Regis for the weekend and that. Why? Just having a... Why? Yeah. Just seeing the world. It's good to travel, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Get out there and experience Lyme Regis. All right, they've got... Um, you know what I saw yesterday? Go on, mate. A dinosaur head, all right? Yeah. That's 350 million years old. Really? Yeah. Where was that, then? Lime Regis. <laughs> like little, like a, just little, loose uh, in like one of our dinosaur heads is missing. What what context was it in, Carl? Just in uh, in like a little gift shop. What? You can't just have that in a gift shop. Yeah. No, that's what it's like here. That's that's they've got loads of them, so they've just got them everywhere. Did you get one? No, I don't. I don't. How much were them dinosaur heads? Uh, they were like they were there. They were. They were too dear, eh? And I've only got a small flat, am I? Yeah, yeah. It's only, for, I've only got a little flat, and you don't want a 350 million year old dinosaur head clattering uh, the place up that you got from a Lyme Regis gift shop. Well, it's good, eh? I've been camping and that. I've been in a little tent. Uh, I know uh, you recently saw Brokeback Mountain. Is, is, there, is there a corollary? Like, like a week ago, you see Brokeback Mountain, suddenly you're on holiday in a tent. Why, is, why has that happened? Just because it was sunny and stuff, wasn't it? So right, it was okay. Sore. You, I mean, you say that, Carl, and I certainly wouldn't like to contradict you, but like, I know that had a profound effect on you, that film, didn't it? Uh, I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh <dear. laughs> it's a little bit embarrassed, isn't you? We're talking yeah. about Festival and World Cup memories on I, this. I was thinking more of Trevor getting excited. Yeah, you got... Why would I get excited, Carl? Because, Trevor, because it seems like, in spite of the fact that it's me that's constantly harangued by the tabloids for my sexual peccadilloes, it's you that's the real deviant. Listen to this from JJ. Trevor Locke. Why does your MySpace say that you are a 17-year-old female? Is, <laughs> is this to help you snare young boys? Is it, Trevor? Is that the reason you claim to be a 17-year-old girl? I have a lot of trouble with the my script, MySpace scripts. And, uh, yeah, sometimes the wrong information comes up. Really? Sometimes yeah. Accidentally. Yeah, d- how hard have you tried to fix that little problem? Uh, quite hard. I just I just don't like, you know... Don't, be in la- don't like being labelled. Yeah, exactly. I don't like being labelled, Matthew. Like those labels. Carl, have you, like, I don't suppose you've seen the people today, have you? You're too busy gazing at pterodactyl wings and stuff in Lyme Regis. But what listen, people? there's a, like in the People newspaper, though, there's a kiss and tell on me. Really? Yeah, what and it's all full of, it's full of unfeasible lies about me going on about cat food and um, brothels, prostitution, things How like that. How does cat food get into that? I don't... I know, it's really weird, isn't it? It's jarring. It, 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 well, because what it says is, um, Matthew, Matthew, read out the cat food bit. Uh, what, the long bit or the... Yeah, read out the long cat food bit so Carl can hear it. One time she bought, this is the woman, she bought the wrong cat food and Russell started to scream and shout, throwing things around the living room. He threw a huge tantrum and then sulked for ages, just about the cat food. Cassie soon realised that Russell was never satisfied with anything, himself, sex and his career. He would talk bizarrely about ruling the world and that his TV career was just a starting point. He would tell her his TV career was a means to getting a following where people would start to follow his beliefs. My beliefs and my stringent beliefs about cat food. You must have it. What, Matt? That's, that's you sound do like so, you. What? You sort of spoil that cat though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how do you mean spoil him. I'm nice. Well, to... last time I saw you, you were going on about how you leave the window open for it. His mates are in there and stuff. When you get back, <laughs> I get rid of it. Yeah, his mates are in there. 
sick of that cat. Oh, I, just yeah, really... I don't like your cat. You're, you can't walk near it. Oh, it goes, it's, it's a nervous wreck now. <laughs> yeah. What's happened to it? Yeah, yeah, it I didn't make me take my shoes off and everything. And you told me to change my energy the last time I was Yeah, he there. said that to me. I was on the toilet. He knocks on the door and goes, when you come out of the toilet, can you change your energy? Because <laughs> you, you've made the cat nervous. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? <laughs> the cat doesn't like people galumphing around boasting. For some reason, he t- associates that with negativity. I'm just trying to protect the cat and make the cat happy. He's a lovely little fella. Yeah, but, you know, spoil it and that, and it's only going to start expecting more. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. I can't possibly fulfil the expectations of that cat. Or indeed, look, I just want to go on a bit more about this thing. Is it all right? Because it's like, it says here that, they, that the people were speaking to Cassie's friend, Rachel Bletchley is the journalist. Speaking to Rachel Bletchley, Cassie said, that the, the friend said, who is this friend? What kind of friend's going to do that? Listen to this bit. Cassie's introduction to the long-haired TV star was just as bizarre. She was in a bar in Hampstead, North London, with her girl pal when Russell kept riding past on his motorbike. <laughs> I haven't got a motorbike. I can't ride a motorbike. You can't do anything like and that. If I can't did, do things like that. I've not got a, a TV license. I've, not got, if you have a TV I've license. got a TV license. I have. I'm BBC employee. I've got. I sorted but out recently. If you did have a, a motorbike, how would you keep riding by the yeah. same window? I can't reverse time. I went past it <laughs> and I went through a portal and went from past again. He kept going past the window. It's like he did not respect the idea of physics. Were you on a base? Is that just like a bike's been turned into a motorbike or is that completely Complete lie. I think it might be a complete lie, right? Because I don't have a motorbike, and as I remember when I met her, it was like oh, I bumped you into a, a near Hampstead Heath. And I was with Cyril, you know that moment. Ah, you were Cyril. Was the bar? On but he doesn't look like a motorbike, does he? He's a, he's, <laughs> he's a man with a beard. He looks like Uncle Albert out of uh, Only Fools and Horses. He doesn't look like a motorbike. You could never make that connection, right? Uh, Cassie said each past he dro- each time he drove past, she was getting uncomfortable and moved away from the window. I'm going to move away from this window. This is making me uncomfortable. Then he walked into the bar, went straight up to her and asked her out. She was a bit bowled over. The next thing I knew, she told me they'd been out on a date. Like as if, the, <laughs> like, as if, as if I'm, I'm some sort of time lord and can make dates happen. <laughs> right, and then, listen to this. Uh, Cassie's pal said he would wait in a hotel and she'd have to dress as a hooker and come and meet him. She always refused to do it, but it didn't stop there because Russell would wear Cassie's underwear and makeup and sometimes dress up as a geeky boy. <laughs> he would do funny dances in front of her. He wanted uh, uh, to pretend to punish him for being a naughty boy, but Cassie would laugh off his bizarre request and let him get on with it on his own. I'll just do this in the corner then. <laughs> you put the kettle on. Carl, it's ridiculous this kiss and tell, ain't it? Well, uh... I'm just going to say, it's probably cheaper, right? Rather than this phone call, I'll just go and buy the people. Rather than, <laughs> <laughs> rather than listen to out. a man read it to you. Yeah, you couldn't tell us what's on the telly tonight, though. Could you? <laughs> um, and me, One Leicester Square, MTV, me and Matt show. That's good. Watch that. All right, then. I'll do that. All right, then. We'll go. Why don't you go off and glare at us, at us some, I don't know. I'm having a big Olympic thing, Olympic breakfast. It's good. Is it nice? You enjoying it's that, mate? I love everything. Oh, well, I could enjoy it, but yeah. you should be careful of your diet. I think you eat badly sometimes. See you later, then. <laughs> Take care. Look after your diet. Bye, Carl Pilkinson. Bye. Bye, Carl. Bye, Carl. See you later. <laughs> yeah, his mates are in there. I'm sick of that cat. I, just yeah, I don't like your cat. You're, you can't walk near it. Oh, it goes, it's, it's a nervous wreck now. <laughs> yeah. What's happened to it? Yeah, yeah, you made me take my shoes off and everything, and you told me to change my energy the last time I was yeah, in Yeah, he said that to me. I was on the toilet. He knocks on the door and goes, when you come out of the toilet, can you change your energy? Because <laughs> you, you've made the cat nervous. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? <laughs> the cat doesn't like people galumphing around boasting. For some reason, he associates that with negativity. I'm just trying to protect the cat and make the cat happy. He's a lovely little fella. Yeah, but, you know, spoil it and that, and it's only going to start expecting more. <laughs> right, yeah. I can't possibly fulfil the expectations of that cat. Or indeed, look, I just want to go on a bit more about this thing. Is it right? Because it's like, it says here that, they, that the people were speaking to Cassie's friend, Rachel Bletchley is the journalist. Speaking to Rachel Bletchley, Cassie said, that the, the friend said, who is this friend? What kind of friend's going to do that? Listen to this bit. Cassie's introduction to the long-haired TV star was just as bizarre. She was in a bar in Hampstead, North London. With I know that had a profound effect on you, that film, didn't it? Uh, I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. oh <dear. laughs> it's a little bit embarrassed, isn't you? We're yeah. talking about festival and World Cup memories on I, this. I was thinking more of Trevor getting excited. Yeah, you got... Why would I get excited, Carl? Because, Trevor, because it seems like, in spite of the fact that it's me that's constantly harangued by the tabloids for my sexual peccadilloes, it's you that's the real deviant. Listen to this from JJ. Trevor Locke 
why does your MySpace say that you are a 17 year old female? Is, <laughs> is this to help you snare young boys? Is it Trevor? Is that the reason you claim to be a 17 year old girl? I have a lot of trouble with the MySpace scripts. And uh, yeah, sometimes the wrong information comes up. Really? Sometimes. Yeah. Accidentally. Yeah. I'd, how hard have you tried to fix that little problem? Uh, quite hard. I just, I just don't like, you know. Don't be, la- don't like being labelled. Yeah, exactly. I don't like being labelled, Matthew. I like those labels, Carl. Have you, like, I don't suppose you've seen the people today, have you? You're too busy gazing at pterodactyl wings and stuff in Lyme Regis. But what listen, people? there's a, like in the People newspaper though, there's a kiss and tell on me. Really? Yeah, what and it's all know? full of it's full of unfeasible lies about me going on about. Cat food and um, brothels, prostitution, things How like does that. Cat food get into that. I don't. I know it's really weird, isn't it? It's jarring. It, 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 well, because what it says is um, Matthew. Matthew, read out the cat food bit. Uh, what the long bit or the? Yeah, read out the long cat food bit so Carl can hear it. One time she bought, this is the woman, she bought the wrong cat food and Russell started to scream and shout, throwing things around the living room. He threw a huge tantrum and then sulked for ages, just about the cat food. Cassie soon realised that Russell was never satisfied with anything, himself, sex and his career. He would talk bizarrely about ruling the world and that his TV career was just a starting point. He would tell her his TV career was a means to getting a following where people would start to follow his beliefs. My beliefs and my stringent beliefs about cat food. You must have it. What, Matt? That does sound like you. You sort of spoil that cat though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, how do you mean spoil him? I'm nice. Well, to... last time I saw you, you were going on about how you leave the window open for it, and his mates are in there and stuff when you get back. <laughs> get rid of them. Slime Regis. All right, they've got, um, you know what I saw yesterday? Go on, mate. A dinosaur head, right? Yeah. That's 350 million years old. Really? Yeah. Where was that then? In Lyme Regis. <laughs> like little, just little, loose uh, in like one of our dinosaur heads is missing. What what context was it in, Carl? Just in uh, in like a little gift shop. What? You can't just have that in a gift shop. Yeah. No, that's what it's like here. That's that's they've got loads of them, so they've just got them everywhere. Did you get one? No, I don't. I don't. How much were them dinosaur heads? Uh, they were like they were there. They were. They were too dear, eh? And I've only got a small flat, and yeah, yeah. It's over over a, you've only got a little flat, and you don't want a 350 million year old dinosaur head clattering uh, the place up that you got from a Lyme Regis gift shop. Well, it's good, eh? I've been camping and that. Been in a little tent. Because uh, I know uh, you recently saw Brokeback Mountain. Is, is there is there a corollary? Like like a week ago, you see Brokeback Mountain. Suddenly, you're on holiday in a tent. Why is why has that happened? Just because it was sunny and stuff, wasn't it? So right. Sure. Okay. You, I mean, you say that, Carl, and I certainly wouldn't like to contradict you, but... Like, all right, Carl, you all right, mate? All right, mate. Yeah, I'm all right. Are you all right? Yeah, good, thanks, Carl. Can we do, like... Um, we're just... We're on air at the moment. I've put you on loudspeaker on my mobile, but the phone quality is not very good. Sh- all right. Sh- sh- <laughs> <laughs> I, can I ring you back and put you through the desk in a minute? Uh, well, I'm just in a little chef about to have a Helen Tick-sized breakfast. Well, I mean, the life you lead. <laughs> a little chef. What are you doing a little chef for? Other little cafes are available. Yeah. Uh, just Lime Regis. You're in Lime Regis <laughs> and a little chef. Bonkers. We've been camping. Have you? Oh. Been camping. Yeah, it is. Like, I'm sure it is. Be careful in that wigwam, Carl. Is, is that it now? Then I've really finished. No, 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 I'll give you a ring a bit later. Can't answer the phone in about 20 minutes. Come on, Carl. Right, c- contribute. Yeah. All right, see you, mate. Bye. We've got um, Carl Pilkington on the phone. All right, Carl. All right, how's it going? Quite good, thanks, mate. What are you doing? Why are you in a little chef? I'm, um, uh... Just went to Lyme Regis for the weekend and that. Why? Just having a... Why? Yeah. Seeing the world. It's good to travel, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Get out there and experience.